We are discussing the idea of the fatigue notch factor, which allows us to make better predictions of reductions in life when there is a notch in the specimen. And the idea is to fall back to the Basquin equation, but by using a correct relation between the nominal stress and the point stress that appears in that relation through a fatigue notch factor. So the way we talk about the or formulate the fatigue notch factor, actually it's quite uh, practical. So first of all, let me make a note here because we have we are now encountering two factors. The first factor is KT. This is the stress concentration factor. And now there is also KF, which is the fatigue notch factor. Just as a side note, remember, in the case of fracture, there was yet another factor, which was the stress intensity factor. Um, that is something completely different. In this case, KT and KF are conceptually very close. It's just that KF takes the role of KT in the presence of fatigue. So making a note of that, we now introduce yet another concept, which is called the notch sensitivity. Now, notch sensitivity is denoted as Q, and it is simply the ratio of Kf minus 1 to Kt minus 1. Now, notice that Kt is certainly greater than or equal to 1. Kf, on the other hand, is less than or equal to uh, Kt. And it is greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, the largest value that we could possibly have up here is um, equal to 1, in which case Kf is equal to Kt. It doesn't matter how small Kt is, how close it is equal to 1, that ratio will always be equal to 1. In other words, the value of Q, the maximum value, will be equal to 1. Okay, that's the upper bound. And the lower bound is when Kf is equal to 1, despite the fact that Kt is not equal to 1. Okay, so when Kf is equal to 1, Q is equal to 0. So Q takes the relation between uh, Kf and Kt that we want to talk about and maps it to a quantity uh, that is lying between 0 to 1. So here, the range where the range, the, the, the lower limit, is where Kf is equal to 1, and this one is Kf is equal to Kt. When Kf is equal to Kt, we have the full effect of the notch on fatigue, because the effect of the notch is reflected completely through the whole value of Kt. Whereas if Kf is equal to 1, it's like we are omitting the presence of the stress concentration because remember this is the thing that's going to map the nominal stress amplitude to the pointwise value so this means that there is no notch effect so the smaller the value of q the less the effect of the notch so now we can if we have a value for q what we can do is we can simply solve for the value of kf from this equation, in other words, Kf will be equal to 1 plus Q times Kt minus 1. Okay. Um, so here, if we know the value of Kt, and we do because once we have the geometry of a notch specimen and a given loading, I know the value of the elastic stress concentration factor, and provided we can determine the value of the um, notch sensitivity, then we can determine Kf and map the nominal stress to the point stress and apply the Basquin equation to predict life for the notch specimen. So the question is, what is the value of Q therefore? So we're shifting the emphasis from a direct expression for Kf to a direct expression for Q, just because it's more convenient to do so. So here we have several options. Remember, we have data 
And as I've mentioned before, as we've highlighted several times before, we can use the data directly. In other words, we can use tabulated values. We can use plots that make use of the data uh, for Q, or we can model it. Okay, in other words, we can take the, let's say, the figures and take those points and do a least square fit to some equation that represents the variation of Q by correctly identifying what Q depends on. And it turns out that there are two popular equations for two sets of uh, popular metals, steel and steel and aluminum on the other hand. Okay. So the first model is called the Peterson model. And the second one is called the Neuber model. In both cases, we are going to see rho. Remember that rho is the notch radius. Um, okay. So what we want to do is, given kT, we want to find Q. Or given a situation with the knowledge of kT, we want to predict eventually kF through the knowledge of Q. Um, so now, therefore, the model is going to predict something about Q. And on the left-hand side, the model works like this. Q is given as an explicit function. Actually, this fits quite well to data um, that looks as such. Okay. Um, so here, alpha, it turns out, is a material constant that is typically given as a function, just like, for instance, for the endurance limit, uh, to be a function of uh, the ultimate strength of the material. So now, you can see an explicit function um, and discussion in your book, um, and just remember that the Peterson model is meant for mostly uh, steels. Now, I can here mention this explicit form for steels, and so the fit to data looks as follows. Now, first of all, notice that Q is something that is dimensionless. The stress concentration factor and the fatigue notch factor are also individually dimensionless because they relate stress to stress. Okay, so for this to be dimensionless, because this is in units of, of length, then alpha also needs to be in units of length. So we just need to use the correct units. So the expression for alpha is given uh, through a logarithmic relation where the alpha is here, it appears in units of millimeters. So that's important to keep in mind. That's what we're calculating. We're calculating alpha for a given sigma u and the value we calculate is going to be the, it's going to have dimensions of millimeters. So the expression is um, 2.654 times 10 to the minus 7. The ultimate, multiplying the ultimate strength of steel squared. And here the ultimate strength is in megapascals. And then the relation continues minus 1.5. 309 times 10 to the minus 3 sigma u. This here as well, it's in megapascals, plus 0 0.01103. So that is our um, fit to the data that is uh, provided. Okay, so that is just one relation uh, that appears in the Peterson model. So this is the Peterson model. Now, but that's not the only model. There is also a Neuber model. It looks similar the way it's structured. There is a 1 over 1 plus term, but then the rest is slightly different. There's a square root and a new constant beta over rho. And here, just like for the Neuber model, beta is a function. I could just write alpha is f of some function of sigma u. I'm just indicating that function through the um, symbol for the variable. So a beta is some function of the ultimate strength. And again, you should see your book. In this case, um, there are two cases, steels and aluminum. And so it turns out Neumer model is a good fit 
for both cases. So both steels and aluminum. Okay, so that's the idea. So the strategy is we know what the nominal stress is. We're going to map it to the point stress and then we're going to use that point stress um, in the Basquin equation to predict life. And the map from nominal to point stress is going to be through the fatigue notch factor. And we calculate that based on our knowledge or model for the notch sensitivity. So what we are now actually in a good position to go ahead and um, do a prediction or a demonstration of this idea through an example. But before we do that, let's also have a look at mean stress effects.